The term Big Three in the world of anime refers to a trio of immensely popular and influential shonen anime and manga series, Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach. These series garnered widespread acclaim for their captivating storytelling, well-developed characters, and dynamic action sequences, collectively redefining the shonen genre and leaving a mark on pop culture, including Western culture. The nickname Big Three stems from their dominant presence in the anime community during the late 1990s and 2000s, representing a golden era for shonen enthusiasts. Their enduring appeal and massive fan bases continue to resonate, symbolizing a shared cultural phenomenon that transcends borders and generations, making them integral pieces of anime history. Big Three also garners a lot of debate among the fan base on which one is better, but it's safe to say that each of them has their strengths and stand out in some areas, but which one is the absolute best when we compare to the others in each of the categories? In this video essay, I came up with 10 categories that could be proxies for quality in the shonen genre, and will rank Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece in each of them, assigning three points to the first place, two points to the second place, and one point to the third place. The manga with the highest number of points at the end of it will be declared the greatest. I tried to be as objective as possible in a lot of these categories, but some of them of course come down to personal taste. Let's get started. 1. Financial Impact I know that there isn't a perfect one-to-one -one relationship between quality and financial success, but it is more often than not a good indicator, even though it can't really be considered in a vacuum without other factors. The main metric for financial success should be manga sales, which is the main medium for the intellectual property, but obviously merch, anime, movies, video games, etc. should also be considered, even though it is a bit harder to find information about it online. We should also consider that these series have different durations and a different number of volumes, so it's better to compare sales per copies sold per volume, rather than just the absolute number of copies sold when comparing the manga sales. With that in mind, we have One Piece in first place, with 106 volumes so far and 500 million copies sold worldwide, which means 4.7 million copies per volume. Naruto in second place, which produced 72 volumes and sold over 250 million copies, or 3.47 million copies per volume. And finally Bleach in third place, which is divided into 74 volumes and sold 130 million copies, or 1.76 million copies per volume. When we talk about estimated net worth, one Piece is also in first place with 21 billion or 1.2 billion per volume. Naruto in second place with 10 billion or 0.14 billion per volume and Bleach right behind it with 7.3 billion dollars or 0.1 billion per volume. That means for this category One Piece is the winner with Naruto in second place and Bleach in third. 2. Storytelling Consistency so, I decided to name this category Storytelling Consistency instead of just Storytelling because all of these three had really strong storytelling moments, but the quality of the writing varied throughout the run of the series, so that's why evaluating how consistent the authors were with the quality delivered seems like a more important indicator to me. The point of this category is to evaluate the depth, intricacy, and coherence of the storylines in each series. Consider how well the plot evolves, incorporates twists, and maintains a consistent narrative, as well take a look at the themes conveyed by each series. In alphabetical order, starting with Bleach, the strength of Kubo's writing lies in the originality of the concept and world building and the character design. Bleach focuses on the supernatural and the spirit world, featuring battles between Shinigami, Hollows, and other spiritual beings. The plot complexity is built around the hierarchy and politics of the Soul Society and different afterlife realms. Bleach's narrative often involves intricate battle strategies, clever use of powers, and intense one-on-one -on -one duels. The series delves into themes of death identity and the consequences of one's actions. It also focuses a lot on exploring the Shinigami sense of duty and sacrifice, power, ambition, and destiny. A lot of people's opinions about Bleach is that it starts out pretty strong and original for the shonen genre, reaches its peak in the Soul Society arc, and progressively decreases in quality over time, with each new arc always falling back into the Soul Society arc structure formula. I crunched the numbers and evaluated the average IMDb rating for every Bleach arc, and verified that the data actually corroborates this impression. 
the average rate is progressively decreasing over time, with the best grade being the Soul Society arc. The later arcs of Bleach have received more criticism for their complexity and convoluted plot developments, which some fans feel affected the overall consistency of the series, with the lowest rated arc being Hueco Mundo. The overall average episode grade for Bleach is 7.62. After that we have Naruto. The series is praised for its character development, especially in the early arcs of the series. Naruto's main themes are the ninja way, which refers to a ninja's personal code of ethics and values, which guides their actions and decisions. Friendship, which is a pretty standard shonen theme. Loneliness and isolation, redemption, hard work versus natural talent. War and peace, and the cycle of hatred, among others. The series, however, does have moments of inconsistency, particularly in pacing, during certain arcs. Naruto's writing quality can vary from arc to arc, with some being more engaging and tightly plotted than others. The series is generally considered to have strong storytelling in its early and later parts, excluding the final moments of the war arc. When we crunch the numbers and evaluate the average IMDB rating for every Naruto arc, we notice a growth in the rating over time, with a few outliners that represent filler anime arcs. The highest rated arc is the battle between brothers the Shippuden arc, while the lowest non-filler arc is the Tenchi Bridge. The overall average episode grade for Naruto is 7.87 average grade, so Naruto shows an increase in episode quality over time, even though the growth is not very steep and also a bigger episode average than Bleach, so it places higher than Bleach in this category. Let's see if One Piece can beat them both. One Piece is known for its intricate world-building and expansive lore, Oda has crafted a vast and interconnected world with a rich history, unique islands, and diverse cultures. The storytelling in One Piece is characterized by long-term foreshadowing and well-planned plot twists. Oda has a remarkable ability to weave seemingly unrelated events into a cohesive narrative. The series delves into character backstories and motivations, providing depth and emotional resonance to the characters' journeys. While One Piece can have light-hearted and comedic moments, it also tackles darker themes, such as government corruption, slavery, and personal tragedies. Some other One Piece themes are friendship and companionship, dreams and aspirations, freedom and justice, and adventure. The pacing of One Piece has been a subject of discussion among fans. Some arcs are praised for their depth and character development, while others are criticized for being slower paced, convoluted, and lacking some trimming and editing, for having too many characters and plot points that are distracting, this trend is more recent in the later arcs, with Whole Cake Island, Dress Rosa, and Wano being the biggest offenders. However, despite the problems, One Piece has generally maintained a strong level of quality in terms of writing, character development, and emotional impact. Oda's attention to detail and dedication to his work are evident in the consistency of the story, and even the most bloated arcs have a lot of good writing going for them. When we look at the data, One Piece showcases significant growth on the average IMDB rating. We notice a growth in the rating over time, with a few outliners that represent filler anime arcs. The highest rated arc is Marineford with 9.15, while the lowest non-filler arc is Long Ring Long Land. The overall average episode grade for One Piece is 8.13 average grade. So One Piece has the steepest growth in average grades out of the three, as well as the highest average grade per episode followed by Naruto, with Bleach in third place, for not only having the lowest average grade, but also for decreasing in quality over time. 3. Original Soundtrack Each of these anime has its own unique original soundtrack that contributes to the overall atmosphere and emotion of the series. They're all pretty good, so this category will be decided subjectively. Bleach's original soundtrack is incredible and enhances the immersive world of the anime. It seamlessly blends a wide range of musical genres from rock and jazz to classical and electronica. The soundtrack effectively underscores the intense battles, dramatic character moments, and the overall atmosphere of the series, and it's very unique, stylized, and effortlessly cool. Naruto's original soundtrack is pretty iconic and identifiable. From the hauntingly beautiful melodies that capture Naruto's loneliness and determination, like the meme all-star sadness and sorrow, to the adrenaline-pumping battle themes that intensify the action like Strong and Strike. This soundtrack is a masterful blend of traditional Japanese instrumentation and modern orchestration, which makes it pretty unique and easily identifiable. 
However, the quality definitely dips in Shippuden, becoming more generic, with the noticeable exception being Payne's theme. One Piece's soundtrack encapsulates well the grand adventure and boundless imagination themes of the series. However, it's the less memorable of the three, except for maybe the song Overtaken, the battle track that always hypes up any moment and it's super iconic, and to the grand line, which is pretty epic and nostalgic. I'm not going to play these songs here for copyright reasons, but you can check them out on YouTube. They're pretty nostalgic and fit each series atmosphere really well. Overall, I'm going to give Bleach first place in this category, Naruto second place, because of the dip in quality after Shippuden, and One Piece third place. Shonen protagonists often embody a set of cliches that are prevalent in the genre. These cliches typically feature a young, enthusiastic, and often naive male character who possesses extraordinary potential or hidden powers. They are driven by a strong sense of justice and a desire to protect their friends and loved ones, leading them to take on challenges with unwavering determination. While these cliches may be familiar, they serve as a foundation for character development and resonate with viewers by promoting themes of perseverance, camaraderie, and the pursuit of personal goals in the face of adversity. They also describe a more generic personality type in order to increase identification by the viewers. In that sense, Luffy's personality definitely fits the shonen protagonist mold. He is known for his carefree and optimistic demeanor. He has a simple and straightforward approach to life, often driven by his desires and hunger. He's courageous, adventurous, and quick to form friendships. His primary motivation is to become the Pirate King and find the One Piece. He aims to create a crew of people he considers his Nakama family and values the freedom to pursue his dreams. His character arc is about growing as a leader, forming bonds with his crewmates, and discovering the deeper meanings of friendship and loyalty. He matures emotionally and mentally as he faces challenges and opponents on his path to becoming the Pirate King. I think Luffy is extremely likable and easy to root for, and perfectly encapsulates the tone and themes of the series. He also has a very interesting distinction of never dropping from first place on literally every official popularity pool, which is less common than you may think for a shonen series. Both Naruto and Ichigo don't have the same distinction. For these reasons, I think Luffy wins this category and is probably one of my favorite protagonists in all fiction. Ichigo should come in second place for originality. He subverts some shonen protagonist tropes by his initial reluctance, non-standard personality traits, lack of focus on a megalomaniacal end goal, moral complexity, inner struggles, unconventional alliances, and a more nuanced approach to personal growth and heroism. Ichigo is depicted as a brash and independent teenager with a strong sense of justice. He's protective of his loved ones and often displays a dry and sarcastic sense of humor. His primary motivation is to protect his family and friends. He reluctantly becomes a Shinigami to defend the living world from the hollows. His character arc involves accepting his responsibilities as a Shinigami, honing his powers, and uncovering the secrets of his lineage. He confronts personal demons, struggles with realizing what his motivations to fight are, and strives to protect both the human and spirit worlds. In third place, I'd put Naruto. He is another very by-the-book shonen protagonist. That's why he's edged out by Ichigo, even though he is extremely iconic. He starts as an energetic and attention-seeking orphan, often feeling lonely due to his status as the host of the Ninetales Fox Spirit. He's determined, impulsive, and values his friendships deeply. His main goal is to become the Hokage to earn the respect and acknowledgement he never received as a child. He seeks to be a role model and protector for others. Naruto's journey is about self-discovery, perseverance, and breaking the cycle of hatred. He evolves from a misfit seeking attention to a strong and respected ninja who bridges gaps between individuals and nations. Overall, these are all very strong and well-developed protagonists but I'd place Luffy in first place, Ichigo in second, and Naruto in third, even though there isn't a bad one in the bunch. Antagonists are crucial in the shonen manga genre because they provide compelling challenges, moral contrasts, and opportunities for character growth, driving the protagonist's journey and adding depth to the story's themes. When it comes to One Piece, antagonists often have complexity and well-developed backstories which humanize them and make their motivations relatable. They serve as compelling foils to the main characters, 
Additionally, some antagonists eventually become allies or undergo redemption arcs, adding depth to the narrative. On the negative side, some one-piece antagonists can be one-dimensional, driven solely by power or greed, or completely ridiculous, which can make their characters less engaging. Additionally, the series occasionally follows a formula where antagonists are introduced, challenged by the Straw Hats, and then defeated, which can lead to predictability in the storytelling. Some of the most interesting antagonist examples would be Doflamingo, a charismatic, sadistic, and power-hungry antagonist who revels in chaos and seeks to maintain control over his criminal organization, aims to regain his position as a celestial dragon and establish himself as a ruler and uses manipulation and violence to achieve his goals. Crocodile, a cunning, ruthless, and manipulative antagonist who maintains a calm and composed demeanor, often disguising his true intentions. And Eneru, whose personality is marked by extreme arrogance, megalomania, and a god complex, Enel views himself as invincible and looks down upon others as insignificant insects. He is highly intelligent, cold, and detached, and has no qualms about eliminating anyone who challenges his authority or questions his divinity. When it comes to Naruto, the antagonists have diverse backgrounds, complex motivations, and character development. These antagonists also serve as mirrors to the protagonist, enabling his growth and moral exploration. On the negative side, some antagonists in Naruto may suffer from lack of depth or insufficient development, particularly in the case of minor villains. Additionally, the series occasionally relies on a recurring pattern of redeeming antagonists through talk no jutsu, which can make resolutions feel formulaic. Some of the most interesting antagonist examples would be Orochimaru, a sinister and enigmatic character obsessed with immortality and attaining forbidden knowledge. Pain, a complex character with a tragic background. He initially appears as a cold and ruthless leader, but later reveals his pain and philosophy and seeks to bring about a world free from pain and suffering, using extreme methods to achieve a twisted form of peace. And Madara, a highly intelligent and cunning figure, he believes in the superiority of the Uchiha clan and has a desire for power and control. Naruto also has Kaguya in his rogue gallery. That fact alone should bring it down this category a few notches, but overall, its main antagonists are pretty well written and interesting. When it comes to Bleach, its antagonists have diverse and imaginative designs, unique abilities, and well-choreographed battles. Many of these antagonists also have complex and multifaceted personalities, offering nuanced perspectives on morality and power. On the negative side, some Bleach antagonists, particularly in the later arcs, can become convoluted and difficult to follow due to the series' increasingly complex lore and large ensemble of characters. Additionally, some of them may be underdeveloped or overshadowed by more prominent figures, leading to missed opportunities for richer storytelling. Some of the most interesting antagonist examples would be Aizen, a charismatic, manipulative and intelligent villain who often presents himself as calm and collected, masking his true intentions. He seeks to achieve godlike power and transcend the boundaries of soul reapers and hollows. He manipulates others to further his goals. Ulkiora, stoic and analytical. He initially views humans and emotions as insignificant, but his interactions with Ichigo lead to personal introspection. And Iwach, depicted as an imposing and powerful figure, with a belief in fate and a desire to reshape the world in accordance with his vision. Overall, I'd place Naruto in first place for this category for having very deeply written and diverse antagonists. Despite the fact that Kaguya, the supposedly final antagonist, was introduced in a very amateurish and frustrating way. One Piece has that as well, but for each incredible villain there's a ridiculous one like Wapple and Foxy. And last place goes for Bleach, because a lot of the antagonists are not fleshed out enough, and even Aizen gets a bit frustrating because of the author insistence in portraying him as this unrealistic, omniscient figure manipulating and controlling every single other character behind the scenes. When talking about supporting characters, One Piece has a lot to offer because of Oda's obsession with fleshing out even minor players in the arcs. I can't think of a better example than Senor Pink. Another highlight for Oda is his ability to write well female characters, which is relatively rare in shonen, even though the female protagonists were a bit sidelined after they entered the New World. One Piece is highly regarded for its exceptional character development across the board, 
Supporting characters often have detailed backstories, motivations, and arcs that tie into the overarching narrative. Many characters undergo significant growth, and their interactions with the main cast influence their development. One Piece's supporting characters often have complex motivations that are explored over time. The series emphasizes their emotional struggles, personal aspirations, and how they contribute to the crew's dynamics and overall themes. However, One Piece often is guilty of creating way too many random characters for each arc that serve no purpose and are completely forgotten, unnecessarily cluttering the story. Naruto is known for its extensive cast of characters and their interconnected relationships. Supporting characters frequently receive opportunities for growth and transformation. The series focuses on personal struggles and how they influence the character's development. Characters such as Kakashi and Shikamaru are very well highlighted. However, Naruto is one of the bigger offenders when it comes to completely forgetting established characters. Just think of characters such as Shino, Sai, Yamato, and many others. As the series progresses, most of the supporting characters lose relevance and the focus is heavy on Naruto and Sasuke. Even Sakura, also a member of the main team, is completely sidelined and underdeveloped. That also brings us to the fact that Naruto is the worst out of the three in terms of writing female characters. An overwhelming number of them are completely useless or underutilized. Bleach offers a diverse range of supporting characters each with their own unique abilities and roles within the spirit world. Some characters, particularly those within the Gotei 13, receive significant development and moments to shine, but a lot of them seem like a big deal when initially introduced but are often also sidelined. In general, Bleach would be a solid middle ground between Naruto and One Piece when it comes to supporting characters. Overall, One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach all prioritize character development and each series has its own distinct approach. For this category, I'll place One Piece in first place, Bleach in second, and Naruto in third. 7. Artwork and Animation In this category, we evaluate the quality of the artwork in the manga and the animation in the anime adaptations. Consider the consistency of the art style, the level of detail, and the fluidity of the animation. One Piece is known for its distinctive and exaggerated character designs. Characters often have elongated limbs, unique facial features, and expressive expressions. Oda's art style features a balance between cartoonish elements and more detailed, intricate designs. His creativity shines through in the imaginative character designs and the vibrant world he has created. While some may initially find the art style unconventional, it has become iconic and beloved by fans over the years. When it comes to animation, One Piece has experienced varying animation quality throughout its run. The early episodes have a more classic and simplistic animation style, while later episodes have seen improvements in animation techniques. In this category, One Piece comes in third place, because even though Oda's setting design is great, as seen in the variety of great locations such as Fishman Island, Zoo, and Wano, the character drawing style is definitely an acquired taste. Another problem with the artwork in One Piece is the fact that the pages have been really cluttered with a lot of dialogue and small panels. With too much information in it, in the last few years, it's part of Oda's problem with editing out some of his ideas for the final product. The animation, however, has been pretty impressive. And in Wano, in moments such as Luffy vs. Kaido and Gear 5, Kishimoto's art style in Naruto is known for its clean lines and dynamic action sequences. Characters are often depicted with realistic proportions, especially in later chapters. The series places a strong emphasis on ninja battles, and Kishimoto's artwork shines during these action-packed scenes. Hand signs, jutsus, and combat moves are visually engaging. The character designs tend to be more grounded and less exaggerated compared to One Piece. Kishimoto's attention to detail extends to clothing, weaponry, and the intricate symbolism used in the series. Similar to One Piece, Naruto has experienced fluctuations in animation quality. Early episodes may appear dated compared to later installments. Naruto takes second place because of the originality of the art in the drawing of characters and locations. The animation has seen some improvement in Shippuden. Taita Kubo's art style in Bleach is characterized by intricate and elaborate character designs, often featuring stylish and detailed clothing and hairstyles. 
Kubo's use of shading and contrast creates a dark and atmospheric mood, especially during battles and supernatural scenes. The art style is generally more realistic compared to One Piece, but distinct from the more grounded style of Naruto. Kubo's illustrations are known for their intricate panel layouts and attention to intricate patterns and textures. Based on personal preference here, I'd rank Bleach in first place for this category. The character design is breathtaking, and Kubo makes the best use of white spaces out of the three, with the animation reaching new heights now, with a thousand year blood war. Etwa Power System A well-defined power system is a stable in most shonen series. All three series feature a wide range of abilities and techniques that characters use in battles and conflicts. Naruto is my favorite one out of the three in this category. It's a well-structured system that allows for many variations and interesting combinations. Chakra is the fundamental life energy that powers all physical and spiritual actions. Ninja use chakra to perform jutsu techniques, which are categorized into three main types. Ninjutsu, the manipulation of chakra for various effects. Genjutsu illusion techniques, and taijutsu, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Chakra is versatile and can be used for a wide range of purposes, but it has its limits. Overexertion can lead to exhaustion or even death. Jutsu techniques require hand seals and incantations, and mastery of a technique depends on the individual's skill and aptitude. Ninja often specialize in specific types of jutsu or elements, such as fire, water, wind, etc. Characters' abilities are influenced by their chakra nature and bloodline traits. In second place, I'd give it to One Piece. Its power system revolves mostly around devil fruits and hockey. Devil fruits are mystical fruits that grant the consumer unique abilities upon consumption. There are three main types of devil fruits. Paramecia, grant superhuman abilities. Zoan, allow the user to transform into an animal or a hybrid. And Logia, give control over and transformation into an element. Hockey in One Piece is a mysterious and innate spiritual power that grants users extraordinary abilities, including the ability to sense and predict the intentions of others, enhance their physical strength, and harm Devil Fruit users. One Piece's power system allows for Oda to exercise his boundless creativity, because any type of ability can be created. However, this system is the softer one out of the three, since there seems to be not a lot of limitations and costs of using these abilities, aside from the fact that Devil Fruit users are weakened by seawater. In third place, we have Bleach. In this system, individuals possess Reiryoku, a form of spiritual energy. Shinigami use Zanpakuto, sentient swords that reflect their wielder's soul to manipulate and control Reiryoku. Zanpakuto have sealed and released forms. The released form, known as Shikai, grants the user a unique ability related to their Zanpakuto's nature. Further mastery leads to the Bankai, an advanced form with even more powerful abilities. The Zanpakuto system allows for diverse combat styles, as each character's abilities are tied to their weapon's unique traits. The concept of holofication and Quincy abilities further enriches the power system. Bleach's system is simplistic, but also allows for boundless possibilities in terms of abilities fitting the character's style and personality. 9. Action and Combat Action and Combat is definitely another genre-defining quality for shonen and influences the series' enjoyment. All three series have real combat and action scenes, but they all approach this aspect with different philosophies. I'd rank One Piece as last place out of the three. One is not the greatest at choreographing battles, and what makes the combat scene stand up is honestly the writing, the stakes, and what is actually motivating the characters to fight. In other words, what's special about the combat in One Piece is not the combat per se, but the setup. The animation, however, has done a great job to elevate the material in this sense, with a lot of highly entertaining and visually stunning combat sequences. Naruto started out with a very unique perspective on battles, since most of them were heavily focused on strategy, leveraging your chakra reserves and abilities, and exploiting the opponent's weaknesses, which is very thematically fitting for a ninja series. However, as time went on and the power level increased, the combat started to get progressively less clever and became more like kaiju-style battles and huge demonstration of power without a lot of thought behind it. It is a shame that Naruto lost a bit of this as time went on because it was definitely something that made the series stand out. That's why it only gets second place in this category. 
First place for me would be Bleach, and I know this is very subjective, but the sword fighting, combined with the unique abilities of each Zanpakuto, would create very interesting and stylized mashups and interactions between fighters. The animation also really elevated the scenes. Again, it's hard not to be subjective about this one. It all comes down to what do you think is more entertaining and which battle style coordinates better with the series themes. 10. World Building World building is crucial in a shonen series because it creates a rich and immersive environment that enhances character development, enriches storytelling, and fosters a sense of wonder in the audience, ultimately deepening the overall narrative experience. On this category, we should examine the richness and complexity of the fictional worlds in each series. Consider lore, cultures, and geography presented. One Piece features an incredibly vast and intricate world consisting of various seas, islands, and continents. The Grand Line, the Central Ocean, is known for its unpredictable weather, dangerous creatures, and mysterious phenomena. The world is home to diverse cultures, civilizations, and species. Each island and location introduce new societies, customs, and lifestyles. The series delves into the history of the world, including the Void Century, a mysterious period erased from official records. Ancient weapons, powerful figures, and lost knowledge contribute to the sense of history. In terms of politics, the world of One Piece features complex political dynamics, with powerful factions like the world government, emperors of the sea, and revolutionary army influencing global events. This is the One Piece category, to be honest, so it definitely takes first place. The world of Naruto revolves around hidden ninja villages, each with its own traditions, leaders, and specialties. These villages contribute to a sense of regional diversity. A lot of these villages, however, are not fleshed out as much as some of the others. The series explores as well different ninja clans and their unique bloodline traits, which often shape characters' abilities and roles within the story. The presence of powerful tailed beasts adds a supernatural element to the world. The history and significance of the tailed beasts are explored in depth. Naruto also has a very rich and interesting world and lore, but a lot of the elements are either not explored as well as they could, or are introduced without proper foreshadowing in a way that fells a bit like a retcon. That's why it only takes second place. Bleach introduces the concept of the spiritual realm, where the living world and the afterlife intertwine. Soul Reapers, Hollows, and other supernatural beings populate this realm. The Soul Society serves as a central location, with its own social structure, ranks, and institutions. The series delves into the inner workings of the Soul Society and its impact on the human world. The world building features the hierarchy of Hollows and the transformation of some into Arankar, powerful beings with a blend of human and hollow traits. The series also includes many different races, such as Quincy and Fullbringer. On a surface level, Bleach world building feels very interesting and creative, but also a bit shallow. We don't really leave the series with the feeling that the author deeply explored everything the setting has to offer to make it feel more immersive. That's why it takes last place in this category. So finally, by tallying the results, we can see that One Piece takes the general first place with 22 points, with Naruto in second with 20 points, and Bleach in third place with 18 points. I was sort of expecting this result, but I was surprised by the small difference between the three, which really highlights that, for some of the more subjective categories, if you have a different opinion on how to rank them, the final ranking could easily be altered. Whether you agree or not with the overall result or with some of the categories, the impact of these three series is undeniable and everlasting. To this day, there is some solid speculation on who is part of the new generation of the big three, but we have yet to see the stars aligning in pop culture in a way to replicate the phenomenon that was this three anime rise to popularity, and they're still going strong. One Piece is now entering its final arc, Naruto has a spin-off sequel series, and Bleach has the manga adaptation for a thousand-year blood war, and we're looking forward to seeing how these series will continuing impacting their medium. So that's it guys, thanks for sticking around until the end, and if you like the content, please support this baby channel by subscribing, liking the video, and leaving a comment. Help us find our place in YouTube's relentless and cruel algorithm. See you next time.